Okay, uh, chapter one, and uh, we're gonna go over some of the basic concepts that we have on chapter one. Uh, a lot of instructors does not teach chapter one and uh, let the students to go over it. Um, and it's not a very lengthy or difficult chapter, but there are some basic ideas that I would like you to know. So um, uh, let's go directly to chapter one to see what it's all about. Um, all right. So uh, in chapter one, we talk about uh, physics. Uh, we talked about uh, units of the physical uh, measurements. Uh, we talk, talk about the um, um, scalars versus vectors, what, what are the difference. And we also uh, go over some of the uh, you know, uh, things that you need to practice uh, and develop a, a method in order to be able to be successful in uh, this course and overall in, you know, if you're taking any course in science. It does not necessarily apply to physics chemistry in mathematics and biology. Uh, some of the skills that you're gonna develop and learn over the, uh, you know, over the, this course uh, will eventually apply to any course that you are taking in future. Okay, so physics and uh, laws of nature. So physics is the study of the fundamental laws of nature. Now, these laws can be expressed in mathematical equations. Um, in fact, mathematics is a man-made concept. Numbers are man-made concepts in order to be able to explain physical features, okay? Number one, number two, three, four, and so on. And they are a man-made idea in order to be able to um, explain physical features, okay? And now, when we are going over the uh, laws of nature, physics is trying to find explanations for those. Um, sometimes from these very simple laws, for example, we're gonna get to that and later on in, the, in future chapters, uh, Newton's law, for example, there are three laws, but then when we combine them, and there, these simple laws can get complex, and we'll get to those later on okay so <clears throat> um it also physics is is not just you know some scientists writing calculations and you know um looking as if it is uh something um out, outside of the course of science in fact everything that is uh, out there everything that exists in the universe is physics it is a range of different subjects. Uh, I believe myself that chemistry is a branch of physics. It is a, a sub uh, major of physics. So everything from planetary orbits, radio, TV signals, magnetism, uh, mechanics, or you know, specifically this, this course, uh, I can add things to this. I can add relativity. I can add quantum mechanics. I can um, add many things to this uh, to this uh, list. So this list will go on and on. Everything that is around you, uh, from the screen of your computer, from the hard hardware that you have on your phones, um, everything is physical. In fact, if you are taking, a, if you are, uh, you know, uh, majoring in physics. You might end up working for as a you know uh, software developer for Apple, or you know um, any any company will be will be interested to hire you because you have developed a, a skills and you've learned over the course of four years if you take if you're having a bachelor or you know six years if you're having a master in physics, you've developed enough that you can exhibit you know problem sol solving um, uh, methods. You can, you have learned enough of mathematics, you have learned enough of uh, computer science that you can take any jobs. So uh, that is something to consider for future as well. So as I said, it's everywhere. Uh, 
wireless phones are following the Maxwell equations, cell phones, X-ray, ultrasounds, MRI, rockets, space travels, cars, air airplanes, uh, and overall, as I said, you're uh, developing a problem solving skills uh, for, for the rest of your life. This is not just for this course. We have some standard units when it comes to physics, and this is part of chapter one. You're going to extensively use this uh, SI system or international system. Um, let me actually highlight that because it is very important. So international system or SI, we also have uh, British uh, system. So the British system is a bit different from uh, you know, international system or what we call it a metric system. So in British system is the same system that we have here in US, United States. Uh, but international system is mostly used by, you know, most of the countries around the world. Um, and the fundamental or basic units are uh, length, mass, time, and charge. So these fours are just some of the fundamental uh, basic units that we have. All right, let's talk about length, mass, and time. So SI or international, um, SI or international system for uh, length or L, mass or M, and time for T, length is meter. So meters is the unit for uh, length. Now here in the US, you, we use different things but almost everywhere in the world people use meters uh, so or metric system so it is one uh, ten millionth of a distance from the north pole to the equator now it was before now it is currently the distance traveled by light in a vacuum in this amount of time in seconds this is roughly equal to one over three times 10 to the power of eight seconds. So, so this much in seconds. Um, this is pretty close to that. Uh, in fact, a lot of times, and this is the speed of light, by the way. Um, so the speed of light, as we show it with, with C, it is, three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second, okay? So in fact, light will travel this much length in one second. Just to give you an idea of how, um, uh, you know, large this number is, if, if you have a, um, if you consider this to be Earth, the light can travel eight times around the world, eight times around the world in only one second. Okay, that's how fast this this uh, this speed is. And for the mass, we have a kil kilogram. Now here in the U.S. we have pounds, or we have um, you know uh, not a metric system, but. Um, for metric system and for this course and for any science course, uh, when it comes to mass, you're using kilogram. A kilogram is a mass of a particular uh, platinum iridium cylinder uh, that is, you know, kept, kept uh, preserved in a, in a preserved area in France. Um, so remember, length, mass, and time are, uh, these are the very important units in international or metric system. Now, uh, mass is a little bit tricky. A mass is the amount of matter in an object. As I unit of mass, as I said, is kilogram. Okay. As I unit of mass is kilogram, the British unit of mass mass is a slog. Or and normally we consider it as pounds, but pound is actually a unit of weight, which is not fundamental quantity. So let, remember that one of the, the fundamental quantities that we had, I, I think I should go back a couple of slides. Yeah. So length, mass, time, and charge are the fundamental or basic units or quantities, okay? Uh, pound that we use in the US when you go to a grocery store and 
you know, uh, you, you're buying something and you're looking to see uh, what the weight is. Um, and you, you see it in the units of pound, but in fact, pound is, is, is a unit of weight, which is not a fundamental quantity. Um, but in fact, what we are actually looking at is the mass of the object. The mass of the object in British uh, in English is this, but in an international or SI unit, it is kilogram. Okay, we're gonna keep, keep this. I'm gonna put the stars around it because it's very important. SI unit of mass is kilogram, okay? Mass is a fundamental quantity, so it's the same everywhere. If you go to the Mars, you would be the same, you would have the same amount of matter inside you, okay? If you go to Jupiter, you will still be the same person. If you, on Earth, you are still the same person. However, weigh, how much you weigh actually, your weight is different because we have a different gravity on Earth compared to Moon, compared to Mars, compared to Jupiter, okay? So mass is the amount of matter that is inside an object. It does not change. If I go to international uh, you know, space station, um, I'll be still the same guy. I will hold the same amount of matter inside me, but I, I will be, uh, I, I, I won't have any weight. I mean, I will be, because there is no gravity there. If I go to, to Mars, I will still be the same person. I'll have the same amount of matter inside me, but I will weigh maybe less, maybe more. Who knows, right? Depends on the gravity of the planet that you're going to. We have another definition for mass. It's the measure of resistance that an object exhibit in response to any effort uh, to change its motion, okay? In other words, if you have a block, for example, if you have a block that is, its mass is 10 kilogram, and you have another block that its mass is 200 kilogram this time, which one would be easier to move with the uh, uh, same amount of force, okay? Which one is easier? Obviously, this 10 kilogram one is much easier. The reason is because it is less heavy, correct? It has less matter inside. So it, it will have re less resistance towards its motion, okay? So one more time, and not the second definition of mass is the measure of resistance that an object exhibits in response to any effort to change its motion, okay? So uh, a block of uh, wood uh, or a block of steel of the same size, which one would be harder to uh, you know, move? So more massive objects, the more resistance they will show towards the motion. Okay, all right. So, the so we talked about so far. We talked about length, right? L, and we use meters to describe it as a unit. We talked about mass, and we use kilogram to describe it. And now we have time as our third fundamental quantities. We have time in seconds. And um, so time is um, a concept, a very interesting concept. Time is continuous. You can't go back and you can't, uh, it's always go forward, flowing, and, uh, you know, forward. And uh, you cannot perceive time, meaning that you, you, you might not, you're not aware of the things that are taking place in the future until you get to those, okay? You can predict what would happen, but you don't know for sure what would happen. So time is uh, a, a concept, a very interesting concept that's always going forward. When you started to watch this video about a few minutes ago, right? There is no way that you can go back to that, uh, to that time. It's already in the past, it's already gone, okay? 
you also cannot jump to 10 minutes from now. You have, it, it will come eventually, but you can't predict. You don't really know what would happen. So time is also a very interesting subject and unit for that, as I said, is seconds, which we show it by S, okay? Um, time and a space are linked. This is a very famous, um, you know, concept that we have that Albert Einstein developed in early 1910s, uh, uh, 1920s. So uh, and time is, uh, you know, uh, considered a lot of times the fourth dimension. We have X, Y, and Z, and uh, the time would be the, the fourth dimension. Okay, so let's see what else we have. So these are some of the uh, length, mass, and time of a, um, you know, interesting things. For example, the radius of Earth. Uh, let's see if I have the highlighter, there we go. So the radius of Earth is this much. Um, height of a person on average is about two meters, which is uh, which actually very high, depends on which country you're talking about, but um, different things, uh, one light year, 9.5, almost five times 10 to the 15 meters. So these are the uh, units of length for different things, all right? Let's go to um, mass, galaxy Milky Way has this much of a matter inside it, okay? Uh, four times 10 to the 41 kilogram, our sun, is two times 10 to the 30 kilogram. And you don't have to remember these. These are just, uh, if you need to use them in future, just come back to this chapter or to, you go to this table and you find them and you can Google them for sure. Uh, but it's, uh, it's very interesting that you can compare, for example, you can compare the uh, mass of an electron, nine time, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilogram, for example, to uh, an elephant. All right, and time in a, in a matter of seconds. So everything on here is seconds. And uh, for example, a human lifetime on average is t uh, two times 10 to the nine seconds. Um, one year is three times 10 to the seven seconds and so on and so forth. So you can go to these tables and take a look at them if you were interested. Okay, now um, I, I, I have this here, but I'm gonna use these uh, later on. So bear with me. Um, a lot of times in order to be able to uh, express numbers in a more scientific manner, in a, in a way that we can all understand what's going on, we're not, uh, you know, we're not, for example, doing this, we're not using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all right? So instead of having a one with nine zero in front of it, I can just use this instead, okay? Or expressing it as 10 to the power of nine. Or a lot of times you don't even do this, we just use a G, a giga, right? So a lot of times that you're using, for example, you're saying, oh, this flash memory is like 10 gigabytes, all right? Or you're saying, oh, I just bought a computer with uh, three terabytes of you know, um, space or whatever, right? So this tera or T is, is that, that number, okay? Kilogram, 10 to the power of three, we said that the uh, units for mass is kilogram, correct? So kilogram, uh, kilogram, instead of this K, I can use 10 to the power of three means, for example, three kilogram is three times kilo is 10 to the power of three gram, okay? So every time that you see this 10 to the power of three, you can just get rid of it and use K instead. 
right? Instead of 10 to the power of three, we can just use K, all right? Perfect. So metric system, as I said, there are fundamental um, quantities in this metric system other than, you know, uh, those that we just talked about, meters, kilogram, and second, we have ampere, we have Kelvin, we have a mole, and we have candela. So metric system is a decimal based system, meaning that we are expressing numbers in the basis of 10, and we use decimal points to express those. Now, um, we just talked about the uh, units of um, the, the length, which we said, length has a unit of meters. Now, unit of area would be meters squared. How is that? Okay, so I know that length is, has a unit of meters. But if I want to cover an area, okay, if I want to cover an area, I have to consider both sides. I have to consider this side and I have to consider the other side. In other words, if I want to see the area right there, I have two sides for it, okay? And the two sides, they're both units of length. So if I, have, if I want to find the area, all right, I have to multiply this side, this side, which has a unit of meters multiplied by this side, which again has a unit of meters. So that's why the unit of area is now meters squared because it is a product of length times length. One side times the other side will give you the area. Meters times meters is meters squared, okay? So the, uh, the, area, the unit for area is meters squared. The unit for volume is meters cubed because when it comes to volume, you have to add um, the third dimension, okay? How high it is. And it is still in the same units of length or meters, okay? So you will have another, um, you will have another meters let me actually get rid of this, all right. Um, you'll have another meters multiplied, and now you have meters cubed instead of having meters squared. We have a speed and a meters per second. We'll get to these later. We have accelerations, uh, meters, um, me instead of meters per second, it is meters per second per second or me meters per second squared. We have density, kilogram per meters cubed. Uh, we have force, uh, kilogram times meters per second square, or also known as Newton. So we have different, now that we have, we know those fundamental units, okay, now that we know all of these seven fundamental units, whatever that is the pro product of these fundamental units, we can find the units for, okay? For example, if I tell you what is the fundamental unit for um, uh, let's see uh, mass times length, for example or L, I want to find the unit for this. This is a fundamental unit. This is a fundamental concept. Mass is always in kilogram. Length is again another fundamental unit. It's always in meters. Now, whatever that this guy is, has a unit of kilogram times meters, okay? so. Whatever the product that you're looking for, whatever concept that you're looking for, you can, based on those fundamental units, you can find its unit, okay? Right. 
so now I don't want to confuse you on this, but these are very important when it comes to understanding these. Uh, you have to know the definition of these quantities or these units. You have to know their symbol, and you have to know their units. So if we're talking about a speed, for example, the definition of a speed is that how fast an object is moving, and changing up the position versus its time. Okay, for example, if I have a velocity or a speed of an object being 10 meters per second, it means each second it is moving 10 meters. Okay, it is here right now. One second later, it will be 10 meters ahead. One second later, it will be another 10 meters ahead. Okay, and so on and so forth. So that what it and then the speed is, uh, is have a meaning, and I want you to know those. Okay, and you don't have to know it right now, but I'm I'm saying for next chapters you have to know the definitions. You have to know their symbol, speed. If you want to show it. You have to know the symbol of V as we have it here for velocity, okay? And the units for that, which is obviously, for this case, is meters per second, okay? Dimensional analysis, and uh, this is a, a very, very uh, important um, concept in physics. It is a little bit hard to understand for the first time if you're using this, uh, but it's very, very important. I'm uh, being honest with you, I got like 10 points out of a problem that I had no idea how to solve. I only knew uh, the formula that they were using, but I had no idea what was wrong with that formula. And by dimensional analysis, I was able to uh, you know, solve that problem. So how does it work? So let's take a look. Uh, any valid physics formula must have a consistent units. If there are multiple terms that, that add or subtract, each term must have the same unit. So um, every term on each side of the equation must have the same unit. So let's, let's take a look, okay? For example, I want to know if this formula is correct, okay? Um, now, the formula that I have provided for you in the formula sheet, they're all correct. But uh, in a lot of cases, you are dealing with, you're ending up with something that you want to do a very, very quick check, less than five seconds, okay? So what you do, you'll take a look at the left-hand side. The left-hand side is x in a unit of length, okay? So I have meters on the left-hand side. x is a unit of length. Right, it is a um, is uh, is length with the unit of meters. Okay, right there on the left hand side. On the right hand side, I have one over two, which is just a coefficient. It does not have any physical meanings behind it. Right, it's just a number, so it doesn't carry any units with it. V is the velocity. Meters per second is the unit for velocity. Okay. And t is squared, t is time, uh, and the units for time is seconds. Seconds squared is the unit, okay? Now I have to take a look. I'm looking at a something on the left-hand side that is that has to be equal to something on the right-hand side, but is it really equal when it comes to units, okay? So on the left, I have meters. On the right, I have meters per second times second squared. So this second in the denominator will cancel out this power two, and I am left with meters times seconds. So on the right-hand side, I have meters times seconds. Is it the same as what I have on the left-hand side? No, it's not. So left is not equal to right when I am looking at a uh, dimensional analysis. So whatever that this formula is, it is incorrect. Okay, now, um, again, the formula sheet that we have uh, provided for you, all the formulas in there are 
absolutely correct. So you can use them, but just for a, uh, you know, um, making sure um, you can always play, uh, play with your formulas, play with the formula sheet to check the, the dimensional analysis in them to see if they are making sense to you. Whatever unit that you have on the left-hand side should be equal to whatever that you have on the right-hand side. Let me give you another example. We have a formula in physics, and I don't expect you to know them right now. This is just an introduction to you, okay? Whatever that I have on the left should be equal to the right. So let's say that I have a uh, formula, something like this. Um, X equals VT, for example. Okay, that's a formula that we use. You're gonna have see it in the next chapter. Um, I want to do the dimensional analysis for this. So on the left-hand side, I have X, which is the distance. Distance is length, and the unit for length is meters. So I have meters here. I want to see if it is equal to what I have on the uh, right-hand side. Velocity, speed is meters per second times, okay, time is second in a unit of seconds. So now I have this second in the denominator and this second will cancel out. I have meters on the left-hand side and I have meters on the right-hand side. So this formula is correct because I have a unit of meters on the left. I have the unit of meters on the right, right here. Okay, um, so they are, they are the same. So this formula is correct, okay? So things like that. And we're gonna, we're gonna see these more. But it's always good practice to check your formula to see if they're dimensionally correct, if they're making sense to you. Significant figure than my least favorite subject in physics Forever, it will still it will still uh, remain my least favorite subject because it's a little bit difficult for me when I learn them. Now it's really fun, but I hate them anyway. Um, so a significant uh, figures, or what we call it um, in another term, scientific notation. I mean, there are very fine details in this, and I would like you to know because uh, I want to uh, you to write in a scientific manner. So leading or trailing zeros can make it hard to determine number of significant figures. For example, I have 2,500 here, 2,500, zero, zero, okay? And I have 0. 0.000036. Each of these has two significant figures, okay? One right there, and one right here, okay? Now, when it, when it comes to, the, to writing in scientific notation, Remember, we talked about uh, these stuff, okay? Keep those in mind. And I think I have it down here, don't I? Uh, no, probably not, but it doesn't matter. Okay, if I present a number to you, something like this, if I say, something like this, okay, 0. 0.000000059. This means that a number that is significantly smaller than one, okay? It's not zero, but it's very close to zero. Now, if I want to write this in a scientific paper, people will, might, might make a mistake counting zeros, correct? Right, people, this one is a small, but what if it has like 10 more zeros in front of it, okay? What if it is something really, really, really small, just like a mass of a proton or an electron, okay? What if it is something really, really big, something like a mass of a galaxy, for example, right? Or something like this number, for example, uh, nine, eight, with 11 zeros in front of it. Can I 
use this in a scientific paper? Can I write something like that? No, because people were, will make mistakes, counting zeros, understanding what it means. So that's the time that you have to play with the decimal point, okay? And I'm gonna teach you how to do it because I struggled with it for a long time and I learned it myself. So let's take a look. If I want to write this number in a scientific notation, I'm looking at it. I will do two things to do it. First, the first thing that you need to do is out of this number, make a number that is between a number that is between one and 10. Okay. So for example, in our case here in the box, I have five, nine. So if I want to make this number to be between one and 10, I would say it is 5.9, correct? Now I'm looking to see what happened to my significant figure, to my decimal point. So my decimal point has moved one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times to get to here. To make 5.9, this decimal point has moved nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That means now if I want to write this number, I have 5.9 times 10 to the negative nine. Okay. All right. Now let's take a look at this number. This big one. Where is the significant figure? Where is the uh, decimal point? Decimal point is right there, right? Let me get rid of that. Okay. Decimal point is right there, right here. Now, if I want to make this number to be between one and 10, if I want to make this number to be between one and 10, I would have 9.8, okay? It is between one and 10. Now I'm looking to see what happened to my decimal point. It has moved one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 times. So 10 to 12. So instead of, instead of, presenting a number like this in my scientific papers, in my exam, I can use this. I can show it like that. 9.8 times 10 to the 12. It's the same number as this one in my clouds right here, but it's much more comprehend, uh, compre uh, understandable. I can comprehend it. I can understand it. I can write it. It's much smaller. And remember, now you have a table that you can use for future. This is a very, very useful table that you have. Okay, let's take a look. 10 to the 12 is Terra, which we use it with a capital T, which we show it with a capital T, okay? So if I see 10 to the power of 12, Okay, I can just, instead of this, I can use capital T. So I can show one, I can write 9.8 capital T. It has, it has the same meaning, it has the same amount. It's just, it's just a different way of presenting a number. It's just a different way of showing a number that is making much more sense and it's making less amount of the space to write and everyone would have the same concept of it. They're not arguing to, to count the, the number of zeros, okay? It's much easier for the computer programming um, and for science in general to understand it, okay? So I expect, expect you to uh, do the same when it comes to um, making scientific notation. Let me give you two more examples on that, okay? For example, 
let's say that this is my number. Um, okay, let's see that. And I want to write it in my scientific manners, in my scientific notation. So I'm looking at it and I see that this number is not between one and 10. So I will just change it to be between one and 10. I'll just say 3.2. Okay, now this 3.2 is between one and 10. And I'm looking to see what happens for my uh, decimal point. And decimal point is right here, right? Now, how many, this, how many zeros does it move? So it has one, two, three, four. So it moves four times. 10 to the power of four. Okay, I'll give you another example. Um, and by the way, four times to the left. So that's why we are keeping the positive here, 10 to the power positive four. Uh, give you another example, let's say six one. Okay, if you want to use that, if you want to use and to change this to be, um, you know, scientific notation. I'll just make this to be between one and 10. So 61 would mean that it's 6.1. 6.1 is between one and 10. And then how many times has uh, the, this decimal point has changed, has moved? One, two, three. So times 10 to the negative three. The negative is because it has moved towards right positive to the left. Just, you know, uh, have it in, in your mind. So you're not making any mistake, making, oh, was it positive or was it negative, what, what, what it was. Now, if it's moving to the right, it is negative. It's moving to the left, it's positive. Okay. Scalars versus vectors. Now in physics, there are a lot of quantities that are scalars, there are a lot of quantities that are vectors. And it's very important to know the difference. For example, the temperature is a scalar uh, quantity, right? Height of a person is a scalar quantity. Time is a scalar quantity, right? But there, we have some quantities that are vectors meaning that their definition is not um, complete if, it is all, if you're only reporting their magnitude, okay? For example, a um, velocity, V, is a vector quantity, right? Force, or F, is a vector quantity. Um, displacement, delta X, for example, is a vector quantity. Meaning, one more time, that you need both magnitude and direction. So you need both magnitude and direction to represent them. So magnitude and direction. But for scalars, who cares what direction? It doesn't even mean to, um, you know, report any direction for them. For example, if somebody is... Uh, asking you, hey, uh, for example, Joe, what's the temperature outside? You would say it's like, oh, it's great. It's like 60 degrees today, right? Something we wish for the summer in St. Louis. But um, you don't say, oh, it's 60 degrees towards the north and 65 degrees towards the west. No, it's 60 degrees. Who cares what direction you're talking about, okay? Does, it's not direction dependent. Um, a height, for example, is another example, is another, you know, um, a concept or another physical uh, value that does not necessarily mean that you need to have a uh, direction for it, okay? For example, I am, um, I don't know, like two meters, um, uh, my height is two meters. The, the, I'm not saying that I am two meters of height towards north, but if I uh, am not, I'm two and a half, 
0.5 meters towards wet. No, that doesn't make any sense. Height, temperature, uh, time, for example, okay? Time is another scalar quantity. For example, you're not saying that it's five seconds towards west, but it is four and a half seconds towards east. East. No, it does not. Time is something that is the um, that does not require you to state something about its direction. It's a scalar. It does not require its meaning is complete with its own magnitude. It does not require you to present any direction for it. But on the other hand, vector quantities are required to be expressed in a directions. For example, I say displacement uh, or how much I moved, for example, from here, I moved five meters. So it will bring this question to you. Did you move to the west, to the east, to the north? Did you end up, after moving five meters, did you end up here? Or did you end up here? You, there, there has to be some sort of a direction when it comes to things like vectors, like displacement, okay? Did you went to the south? Did you went to the east-north? Where did you go, okay? And again, these are some of the things that um, um, that are just the scalars. Vectors, displacement, velocity, force. These are when you want to um, uh, express these vectors, you need to represent them by an arrow, okay? So if I'm saying that something like delta x or displacement is a vector, I have to remember that I put a little arrow on top of it, okay? If I'm saying velocity is a vector, I have to remember that I have put an arrow on top of it. So delta x is a vector, I have to put an arrow on top of it. Force is a vector, an arrow on top. Velocity is a vector, an arrow on top. Temperature is a vector. No, temperature is a scalar, so forget about it, All right? So whatever that is a vector, I have to put an arrow on top, All right? That's something to remember. It's very easy to miss in the middle of an exam, but I want you to remember it by practicing it, okay? Now, vectors have some features. Um, and uh, we're going to go over uh, vector quantities uh, in the next couple of chapters uh, this week for sure. Um, but just good to give you an idea, if you have a, four, a velocity of 4 meters per second, which is a vector to that direction, if you multiply it by 2, you'll get uh, 8 meters per second in the same direction, but the amount or the magnitude of that is doubled. For example, if I have vector A, vector A, how do I know it's a vector? Because I just put a vector on top of it. If I have vector A with a value of four, okay, let's say four meters, it's a length. Now, 3A, it will still be a vector, okay, will have a value of 12. So if this is A, for example, 3A will be three times that. So roughly something like this, 3A, okay. Okay, so, um, Again, so this car has a started from this point at the center and it has moved two kilometers towards this point, you know, the finishing point. So when it comes to displacement, it moves two kilometers. The question that that will bring to your mind is that towards what direction? 
So you need to express your value with enough information to talk about its direction. You say, oh, it has moved two kilometers with a um, angle of 30 degrees. And now I am providing the information so that you know what I'm talking about. This question is gone. You know, you've got the information so you know what we're talking about. All right, last part of the uh, chapter one, problem solving in physics. So you have to read the problem carefully. And I would say for the next chapters, for the rest of your life, whatever that you're dealing with, you have to read the problem. You have to understand the problem. And it's a life of skills, in fact. 50% of solving a problem is understanding the problem. If you don't know what the problem is asking for, you cannot solve it properly. You might be lucky to get the final answer, but you would be confused yourself. So 50% of solving a problem is understanding a problem, okay? If uh, that problem is a problem that requires you to sketch something, just sketch something very simple, a system. A block is moving to the left. A block is moving to the right. Sketch something for it, okay? Visualize the physical process and then you know, put a strategy behind it. Identify the appropriate equations, which will provide the equation sheet for you, okay? So you, you don't have to memorize everything. It's brutal to ask you to memorize um, uh, physics problems, physics equations in a month. Um, you know, it's just not right. And solve the equations and uh, solve it for those unknown things that you're looking for. Check your answers and explore the limit and the spatial cases. So these are some of the things that you have to do when it comes to problem solving in physics. And I, as I said, the most important one is understanding the problem. If you understand a problem and you don't know how to solve it, just write a paragraph. Say, hey, I understand this problem. This is what's happening physically inside it. I don't know the formula for it. I can't put the formula together, but this is what's going on in the physics behind it. And you might get some points for it. So understanding the problem is very important. Okay, so let's review something very quickly uh, in a minute. So what we did, we said that a physics is everything. Everything that's around you is physics, okay? Now you hit, there are some standard units, which we call international uh, system or SI and there are some fundamental units length mass time charge uh, there are some of the fundamental units okay uh, we explicitly talk about length mass and uh, time in seconds and, uh, and then we later on explain show you some of the examples of some of the very interesting uh, you know uh, measurements that we have done um, you know, for, for different, um, you know, features. For example, Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilogram. The amount of matter that's inside the Earth is this much, for example. And then uh, we say that every time that we're dealing with big numbers, we have to use, uh, and I say we have to because it's very important to use it. Nobody will, you know, uh, twist your arm if you're presenting a number like that but it's just not right to do it because uh, we would have problem counting the number of zeros in front of this number and it's just difficult to do so and uh, in a metric system as we said we have seven fundamental quantities uh, that you have it right here and um, if you multiply if you add if you subtract these quantities you can find using the units, there are units, you can find the units of what you're looking for. If I'm looking for an area, I know an area is this length multiplied by this length, okay? So for example, X times Y. So X is length, the unit of meters. Y is length, the unit of meters. If, if you meet, multiply meters by meters, you'll get meters squared for area. For volume, we'll get meters cubed, things like that. And uh, I said that you, you have to know the definition, okay? For example, the speed is how fast an object is moving. You have to know it's simple, which is velocity, or V, 
and you have to know its unit, which is meters per second. And then we explicitly talk about and solve problems for uh, the scientific notation. I told you that I, want, I don't want to see a number like this. Your calculator might not have any problem dealing with these numbers, but if I'm reading a problem or a solution to a problem and I see like a lot of zeros in front of a, a number, I would just be, oh, uh, that's a lot of zeros. Okay, so nine, eight, zero, zero, zero. Oh my gosh, like to the infinity, I can count zeros in front of this number. But instead, I told you that you can express the same meaning but this time using this notation. So 9.8 times 10 to the 12th, instead of having this much, okay? And uh, we talked about two other examples. So uh, if you have any problems with these, go and watch these two uh, to this part of the video, watch how I solve these two again. Um, and then we said that there are two types of quantities, scalars and vectors, vectors requires to have a magnitude and a direction to be complete, but the scalars just needs a magnitude. If, if you're asking the, what the temperature is, I can just give you the magnitude of it, a number for it, and I have provided you with enough information. But if I'm asking you, I, uh, you know, I moved five meters, it will bring a question for you to, uh, to your mind, it was like, oh, you moved five, five meters to what direction you moved? Did you move west, did you move east? Where, where did you go? Uh, so I have to uh, provide you with the direction of it uh, to be able to make it complete for you, okay? And vectors, any quantity that is a vector has to have a, an arrow on top of it. There has to be an arrow on top of everything that is a vector. Okay, we're gonna go over these in the next chapters again, but this is just an overall uh, introduction to you know um, the physics and what we have in chapter one mostly. Okay, so uh, this is what we have in chapter one. Make sure that you're following these eight different uh, you know procedure for uh, solving a problem in physics. The most important one, I'm going to highlight it because I really like to use these tools here and make myself familiar with these as well, but it's also very important because read problem carefully, understand the problem, know what the problem is asking you. That is 50% of solving a problem, understanding what's going on. Sketch a system, write down what you have, write down what you don't have, identify the equation that is working the best for this equation for this problem and then solve those equations for the unknown check your answers that's that's what i want to see at the end of this semester okay uh we're gonna go to chapter two